How to write an adventure story. First, you need a main character, a hero, perhaps. What is likable about the character? They need characteristics we like, so we will root for them. They will need to show this in the story. Kindness, perseverance, bravery, intelligence. She had large, round, gray eyes just like me. In our religion, gray eyes meant you had a special magic inside of you, and you were put onto this earth for a reason. Gray eyes meant you were wise and strong and powerful. I was not worried. I was not crying into the arms of my mother and father like my sister was. I was sitting and waiting, waiting for what millions of people have been waiting for. They always used to say that the world could end right now or tomorrow or in a million years. I broke free of my grief and hid it in the back of my mind. I picked up my sister and ran towards the door. In a good adventure story, the main character may have a weakness. They need to have some sort of weakness that will present a personal struggle that they will have to face in the story. Fear of closed-in spaces? Laziness? Self-doubt? Are they judgmental about certain people? Do they have insecurities? Are they irresponsible sometimes? Are they somewhat self-centered? Annika had to realize she was only ten years old and that she could not do all that stuff in real life. I want to meet my father, too. Mom, can I go to Cleveland with Ariana? Other characters. Antagonists. Antagonists antagonize. They are the bad guys, the evil witch, fear in the form of a scary puppet, bullies, the government officials that disapprove of the hero, the competition. They create conflict and peril, which makes for an exciting adventure. Informers do just that. They inform. They are the type of supporting character that helps move the story along by giving the protagonist information, inspiration, and informative guidance. Teachers, mentors, wise men, gatekeepers, relic holders, technicians, and captured and interrogated antagonizers. Supporters. This goes beyond the supporting character tag. Supporters are those that, well, support the protagonist. Almost every protagonist needs someone to support them throughout their emotional and physical journeys. Often referred to as caregivers, supporters exist to help the protagonist through the conflicts that they are dealing with, while often offering a moral and ethical base to keep the protagonist honest and on par with their true character. Comic Relief This type of character can offer moments of lightness in otherwise upsetting or terrible situations. This can be the supportive person or another side character. Exposition or story before the big story. Who is the main character at the beginning of the story? What is their name? How old are they? What do they look like? What are their weaknesses and why? Show their weakness in the beginning of the story. Her bright blonde bangs were blowing in her face and were covering her sparkling hazel eyes. She was just feeling the same and nothing was happening like it used to every other day. Today she didn't have that special vibe she had every other day from a cool adventure she would always have in her head. But Annika had to realize she was only 10 years old and that she could not do all that stuff in real life. I want to meet my father too. She jumped up and down smiling, eager for the answer. Setting. Where does the beginning of the story take place? A city? A town? Oklahoma? Where is the character when the story begins? Where are they? What room? Are they inside or outside? What it country? was a foggy and somewhat is gloomy it at morning school? in Dickenwood Forest. Are they at a place of work? Is it day or what night? What happened just before? Did a dog get left at home and curious? Did someone die? Did someone remarry? Was there a divorce? Did someone move to a new town? Is a war over? Was a secret lab working on a series of experiments? Did a child just get adopted? Did an elderly and lonely lady just move into a new apartment after her husband died? Here's a good example of an exposition. Hello, my name is Julia. I live with my younger brother on an island. Today is his birthday, so I have to gather sweet, ripe, and juicy fruits and vegetables from our garden so I can make him his favorite foods. Julia, when will the cake be ready? I hear Ian yell across the beach. The only thing, that, thing Ian likes about his birthday is the cake. I think the rest of his birthday reminds him of when our parents disappeared. We live on our island by ourselves. We have just one neighbor. Her name is Elizabeth. She is an orphan, too. We are best friends. We go on adventures and do arts and crafts together. Even though we don't go to school, we still learn stuff, and we both want to be artists when we grow up. We love living on our island. We call it paradise a la la la. Example 2. The Arcade Adventure Wake up! yelled Alexa's sister Kaylee. Your clothes are on the dresser. You're, you better slip them on fast. It's already 8 o'clock. 
We have to leave for school in 45 minutes. Why didn't you wake me up earlier? asked Alexa as she almost fell out of bed. Thankfully, her magenta pink covers were there so she could hold on to them. She crawled down the wooden ladder of her loft bed. Because I was busy getting ready for school, like you should be doing right now, replied Kaylee. As she walked down the stairs, Alexa found a pair of dark blue jeans, a pink t-shirt, and a black lace sweatshirt lying on the dresser. Alexa quickly put on her clothes and brushed her long blonde hair. Mmm, Alexa smiled, her favorite breakfast food. She smelled her favorite breakfast food, French toast, as she walked down the stairs. When Alexa was downstairs, she saw her mom preparing breakfast. Good morning, Mom. Where's Dad? asked Alexa. He had to go to work today early, but he told me to tell you that he loves you, replied Alexa's mom. Oh, and after school, we're going to the arcade with Davy and Diana. Yay, said Alexa. Alexa always enjoyed a little bit of video game in her day. Alexa's mom set the platter down in the middle of the table. Alexa quickly ate her breakfast and picked up her backpack and headed for the bus stop. Example 3 one stormy evening, Mrs. Smith was opening the front door to her house when she thought she saw something whir across her window. I must be seeing things. I need to go to sleep. Mrs. Smith sighed. When she went inside her house, she collapsed on her couch and turned on the TV. Just then, her husband, the town baker, came into the living room. How was your day? Mr. Smith asked quite happily. Anyway, I made you your favorite food, banana cream pie. The journey, quest, or goal begins. The character ends up on an unexpected journey and ends up stranded in a strange place and needs to get home or at an important time in their life they make a decision they must go for a goal start something new like move to another country and buy an old villa or form the first bobsled team from their country to enter into the olympics or go to south america and live with the gorillas for example ethan tripped and fell on top of a book ella went to go help him up but on her way she tripped and fell on top of ethan at that moment, they felt themselves falling and falling. Suddenly, they fell on something soft. Ella could not believe her eyes, for she and Ethan were on the biggest leaves she had ever seen. In front of them was a beautiful, lush forest filled with any type of plant you could imagine. Just as she was taking this all in, Ethan sat up and stared at everything in amazement. "'Where are we?' asked Ethan. "'In the enchanted forest,' said a voice. Ethan and Ella looked around, but didn't see anyone. "'Where are you?' asked Ella. "'Over here,' said the voice. Ella and Ethan finally saw where the voice was coming from. It was a tiny robin perched on a branch. Who are you? asked Ethan. My name is Robin. Who are you? My name is Ella, and this is my brother Ethan. Could you help us get home? Also, have we shrunk? No, you have not shrunk. As for your other question, I might be able to help you. What you have to do is find the secrets of the enchanted forest. Alexa tried to throw the coin into the slot, but she missed, and it landed behind the video game. She looked behind the game and saw a giant hole. The coin went down the hole. The hole was glowing green, and it sounded as if it were saying, Come in, you three, in a creepy voice. Diana and Davy, quick, come here. Diana and Davy came rushing towards Alexa. They too heard the voice, Come in, you three. That's weird. Did you hear that? It sounds like it's saying, Come in, you three, said Diana. Yep, said Alexa and Davy. Nobody else seems to notice except us. Do you think we should go down the hole? asked Davy. It could lead to something amazing, or it could get us in a whole lot of trouble, said Alexa. But I think we should take the risks, added Alexa. I think we should take the risk, too, said Davy. Me three, chuckled Diana. The three friends jumped into the hole. Ah, screamed Alexa. We're going to die, sobbed Diana. This is amazing, but I'm going to puke, yelled Davy. The three of them were on a long, long, long slide. Suddenly, the slide came to a stop. Alexa, Diana, and Davy opened their eyes and saw a world that looked identical to Adventures in Gold Rush. How was your day? Mr. Smith asked quite happily. Anyway, I made your favorite food, banana cream pie. Mr. Smith opened up a small box with a picture of a banana on it. Inside the box was a crispy and tender banana cream pie. It was already cut and the inside was as yellow as the sun. Mrs. Smith was about to take a slice when suddenly a little chunk of the pie stood up and started to play a tiny brass trumpet. Hear ye, hear ye, Mr. King Chunky in charge, chief of sweets, and the emperor of dessert, the pie announced. At that, all the pieces of the pie jumped into Mrs. Smith's lap and Mrs. Smith's fainted dead away. dead away. The desserts carried her out the door and into the bakery. I can fly, Elizabeth shouted. Of course you can. You have been turned into a fairy, a baking fairy. Your sister Sophia is a flower fairy, the queen responded. But now we must go to the palace immediately. When we got to the palace, I realized that I was wearing a white and lilac dress of flower petals. 
Elizabeth was wearing a silver and pink dress with a gold apron. The dress was the softest thing I had ever worn. Then the queen said, You are about to go on the greatest quest of your life. What quest? I asked. Don't worry. It won't take very long. All you need to do is find a white and lilac stone, the queen said. Now go. Dangerous event or obstacle one. Something scary or dangerous or challenging that happens. They must overcome to, to move closer to their goal. Falling into the ice. They are attacked or kidnapped. There is a chase. They get disqualified. They get sick. The property gets damaged. They lose communication. They can't get approval for something. Or there is a misunderstanding or conflict. Just then, a leopard sprang out of nowhere. The leopard growled, taking one step at a time, and slowly walked toward them. Splat! The leopard stepped on the cake. But the leopard did not care. No, not the cake, yelled Pumpkin. The leopard leapt toward Pumpkin. Jenny gathered all her courage, grabbed a stick nearby, and hit one of the leopard's legs. Lily and Pumpkin watched in amazement. The leopard fell down, unconscious. Dangerous event for obstacle two. We have to booby trap our island. Elizabeth looked on our bookshelf for books on booby traps. She found multiple results. We set traps such as holes covered with leaves that once you step on, you fall into a deep pit. Nets fall onto you if you trot through certain areas and other traps like that. Julia, Ian announces. The ship is here. Get Elizabeth, I shout. There is one more thing I have to tell you. I begin as Elizabeth enters. The places I have painted blue are safe. We have to lure the pirates into the traps. The code word to start the booby trap is what? What? Elizabeth asks. What is the code word? I repeat. I get it, says Ian. It's meant to fool the pirates. Exactly, I reply. Okay, guys, let's do this. What? The pirates are coming on land. There are more than we thought. We fought two or three. Ten come on land. One of the pirates snarls and sniffs the air. Traps, he mutters. He steps forward. Ah! He screams as he falls into a random hole in the sand that wasn't supposed to be a trap. Another pirate steps forward a little farther. What? screams Ian. We all jump somewhere painted blue and a boulder rolls down from a nearby hill and knocks out the pirate. Dangerous event or obstacle three. Olivia was so scared she couldn't talk. She walked out of the store. I'm glad I made it out of there, Olivia said as she looked up and saw the mall. There's got to be something here to help me, Olivia said as she stood in the mall parking lot. She thought of how small the parking lot looked. So where should I go? Olivia thought. Then she saw a clothing store out of the corner of her eye. Yes, Olivia said a little bit loudly. Final ultimate obstacle, the climax. The goal is close, but there is a final dangerous or scary conflict. The bad guy stands in front of the treasure. Face your worst fear. Do something that requires a miracle. Do the hardest thing you've ever done. Do one last ditch move before defeat. You reach the place, but you have to slay a dangerous animal or do some great act of goodness or courage or selflessness that shows you have changed or passed a test. We were feeling very sad and about to give up. Elizabeth looked like she was going to cry and said, Now... Now can we, how can we ever go back to the queen without the stone? I leaned over to Elizabeth and gave her a big hug. I said, she will be proud of us for trying, and I love you. Suddenly, I felt my dress getting heavier. It felt like something was in my pocket. I reached in and pulled out a white and lilac stone. Olivia heard someone say, Hey, you, this is a construction site, hard hat workers only. You need to leave right away. But Olivia kept going. She knew she could never get home unless she touched the glowing brick. Olivia was three rooms away from the brick when her foot got caught on the Lego floor. She was stuck. Olivia pulled as hard as she could to get free, and just as the construction worker was coming to get her, she pulled the Lego brick up and ran the rest of the way with it stuck to her foot. She got to the glowing brick and touched it. With a sparkle, a flash, and three fireworks, Olivia was herself again. Goal or Resolution the animal is rescued, the treasure is in hand, and the bad guys defeated. The race is won. Spell is lifted and the bad guys are gone. The bad guys are stopped and the portal is opened. You've reached your destination and found the thing you were looking for. Everyone just got saved. The hero is given a gift or shown an act of mercy or grace. When the stone was lost, our fairy kingdom was becoming a mean and dark place. But you have found the stone and helped to return our kingdom to a place of joy and goodness again. The moral or theme is implied and even stated. Believe in the magic of Christmas. Good conquers evil. Never give up. If you have courage and are kind to others, you will eventually be rewarded. Never underestimate other people who are different. Being kind to others and being unselfish can be rewarding. Love conquers fear. True love sees past beauty. 
The reason you found the stone in your dress, Sophia, was because you were being loving to your sister when she was feeling sad, even though you were also sad. Thank you for finding the stone. I really miss this place. I will never stow away again. Learning not to be selfish and to do what is right. Pretty soon, Graham pulled up in her car, rushed in and gave me a huge hug. I had never been so happy to see her. This one is implied. A scary event can make you appreciate your loved ones. Life is precious and you never know what could happen. I forgive, it told her. Thank you for everything. And then, wise old oak was no more. Sophia knew it in her heart. The wind ended, and the birds began to sing. Wise old oak was real. Sophia was sure of it. And even though he wasn't alive right in front of her, Sophia knew that the wise old oak would live forever in her heart. Conclusion, ending, or closure. The happy ending. Olaf has his own winter cloud. Kristoff gives a kiss. The country is in spring. The town accepts Elsa. People go back to their homes, changed and better. They are not the same, but they are stronger or happier in some way. One day, unfortunately, the queen dies, but luckily the reason she asked Sophia and Elizabeth to find the stone was to test them to see if they could become the new queens. And they passed, so they became the new queens of Acamel and Sicilette. Nelson and Ariana stayed a week with Flower Face and swam in the pond behind her house, which made them glad they brought their bathing suits. They helped Grandmother sweep her house, fix her roof, and collect wood for the winter. They also ate lots of ginger snaps and kept Grandmother Flower Face baking, baking, and baking, and they prepared to leave. Nelson and Ariana thanked Grandmother Flower Face for everything and promised to visit again soon. As we walked out, we said goodbye, and the foster parents drove away. I held hands with my parents and said, let's go home where we belong together. And then, for the first time in her life, Sophia heard the meadow song. It was a lively tune. The birds set the beat, and the wind was the words. It was the most beautiful thing she had ever heard. Sophia promised herself that she would always come back to the meadow every single day. And she did. Every time she could hear the meadow song, she always brought a gift for the meadow, for the plants, for the fairies, and for the spirit of the wise old oak. And sometimes she found something from the meadow, right next to the wise old oak's body.